up to the beginning. God lead us. Going into hospice. Or going under hospice, however you right, do it. Under. Thank you. 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Uh, again, it's great to have the Alleluia back um, as we can celebrate the resurrection. Um, you'll hear some, some, mess- some words in the sermon regarding to low Sundays. Um, typically after a holiday service, uh, one of the high holy services, usually the next Sunday, the uh, attendance drops off. I will say, I don't think our attendance has dropped off. I think it just returned what it was normal. Uh, Okay. I looked at Luann because she tracks all that. Um, But again, I do wish that you would sing out when we get to those hymns. Uh, The last one you're familiar with, we've done this a number of times And I know it's a little bit more difficult without the music there, but again, uh, once you start hearing it again, it will be very familiar to you. We had a great fourth Friday food and fellowship last Friday. Uh, Did I get it right? No. Okay. (laughs) What is it now? Fourth Friday feast. Feast and and fellowship. fellowship. Okay, feast and fellowship. It was about three dishes short of a feast. (laughs) Although the food that was there was excellent. Uh, We had grilled chicken. And it was our master, our new master chef in the congregation, part of our fellowship board uh, that cooked that. So uh, again, you're missing out on some some great food, but also some great uh, fellowship with, with one another. In that, Uh, Lisa, we're still going to have, it's sort of a, I can't say it's it's not a baby shower, but it's a pantry shower, I guess we would call it. We're doing a pantry shower for our kitchen because as we've been doing these fourth Friday feast and fellowships, uh, they have found out that there are needed kitchen utensils that they are missing. And so there is a... Uh, sheet on the bulletin board in the narthex with that. If you do happen to want to purchase one of those items, put your name next to it uh, because I can see us getting 20 pizza cutters. What do you do with 20 pizza cutters? Uh, (laughs) uh, So so please please take note of that. If if any of you would like to go next Saturday with me down to Gainesville, uh, for the circuit convocation, please let me know uh, today or first thing tomorrow morning, uh, and, and uh, we can make those arrangements. Um, other than that, we are in the ce- season of Easter. Uh, as you will notice, there are no Old Testament readings. Sorry, Pastor Sparling, there are no Old Testament readings. Uh, they all come from the book of Acts uh, during the season of Easter. And you will also notice that the epistle readings come from Revelation. Uh, So so again, you you sort of get this end-time, victorious celebration of the resurrection in the midst of it. And then the traditional gospel today is, and he gets a bad name. He gets a bad rap, Doubting Thomas. Um, But he has one of the greatest confessions of faith in Scripture, uh, as you will hear that this day. So as we are gathered together this day, uh, God has brought us here uh, to receive his gifts, especially the gift of his word and the gift of his people. And so we take some time for meditation, let the spirit guide your prayer, meditate on one of the scripture passages or, or on one of the hymns, and we do so as the candles are being lit and the prelude is being played.
Indeed, as we continue to survey the wondrous cross on which our Prince of Glory died, he also gives us signs and wonders in our day today through word and sacrament by which to still behold his glory. And remembering our baptism, we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand for the singing of the hymn. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Taking refuge in the mercy of the Lord, let us come before him in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by the things we have done and by what we have failed to do. We have not honored you as we ought, nor have we served others in love. We deserve to be cast from your presence forever. Yet in your great mercy, you sent your Son to die and rise again for us. Help us to know the power of his resurrection and to share in the joy that his forgiveness brings. Enable us to receive your mercy and be renewed by your spirit that we may honor you as the Lord and God in whom we place our trust. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hears our prayers and answers them for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ. By faith we stand at his cross, an empty tomb. 
We find our refuge and sing for joy in the shadows of his wings. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. First reading for the second Sunday of Easter 
is from Acts chapter 5. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. And when the high priest came and those who were with him, they called together the council and all the Senate of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison, so they returned and reported. We have found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and chief priest heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, look, the men you have put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain and the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The epistle is from Revelation to St. John, chapter 1. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of kings on earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even though those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I 
John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a voice, a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze refined in the furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at my feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forever, and I have the keys of death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who have not seen. And yet have believed. Hallelujah. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails... And place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although, although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Congregation may be seated. 
Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our text for meditation is the first lesson that Betty read from Acts chapter 5. Um, you, would, you would think we'd start with Acts chapter 2, but that's a whole nother celebration that is coming up a few weeks from now when we celebrate the Pentecost. But we're, we're already here uh, in this time of teaching and preaching. But as you see at the beginning of our text today, it's also a time of signs and wonders. But if you think back just prior to this text, when we go into the Gospels, wasn't Jesus' time on the earth a time of teaching and preaching? Wasn't his time a time of signs and wonders? And so now, right the first Sunday after the resurrection, we, we dive right into the opening chapters of the early Christian church. And I, I love this text because there the people are so eager and energized by what has been happening, not only in the resurrection, but also in the Pentecost, which was 50 days later. They were so eager and energized that they knew these, these apostles were coming by, they brought their sick ones out into the street just so the shadow of Peter could be cast upon them. Signs and wonders. Signs, something physical. Wonders is wondering how it happened. Signs and wonders that even just a shadow can bring healing. But what is even more remarkable back as we read the book of Acts is these were common occurrences. For the people, they came to be expected. Sort of like our sanctuary last Sunday on Easter Sunday. Here we were people eager to be here. Just in the context of what has happened the last two years where we could not gather on an Easter Sunday as we would have liked. But people were eager to be here. They were energized. But I don't know about the elders. I know about me. I couldn't reach them all. I couldn't get to them all. There were too many. Just like, just like the people back in those days, Peter couldn't get to them all. But unlike Peter, well, I guess it is Peter in this text. Here he is roaming the streets and suddenly there's a conclusion that he gets thrown into jail. Sort of like last Sunday. It was great to have a, a packed house. It was great to celebrate the resurrection. But there seemed to be a sudden conclusion when the daylight fell last week that Easter seemed to be over. And I'm sure like the people in this text, there are those of us who sit here today, why can't we just keep things this way with a packed house week in and week out. You might say that we're living in the pit. And for those of you who are taking note, pit is an acronym for a pattern of increasing tension. But if you listen carefully when Betty read, that's exactly what happened. At the start of the text was where all the miracles and, and things took place with Peter. But Peter was thrown into jail. He was literally put into a pit. Because the jails back in those days were deep into the ground. It was the beginning of the early church. Even then there was a pattern of increasing tension. 
And the sad thing was, it wasn't coming from outside the church. It was coming from within the church. It was coming from within the temple environs. And so many today would like to say all the oppression that we are experiencing as a church is coming from outside the church. But the thing is, the devil works from the inside out. And likewise, we too have increasing tension within the temple environs. There are those who sit among us or watch us that challenge the gospel proclamation. They they begin to ask questions. They begin to doubt. They begin to challenge the pastor on what he has preached. They confound the integrity of the word. And not only do they put handcuffs on the pastor when, when they challenge him, but also at the same time they are binding the word and putting it into custody. Because they want the preaching that they hear to be supplanted. Maybe worse yet, they want the preaching that they hear to be based on popularity and priorities. Not that of the word, but that of their own choosing. They want to hear something that is popular to their ears, that tickle their ears, that makes them feel good, that I can pat myself on the back and go, I'm okay, you're okay. Or they want their priorities to be preached. And, and I know speaking to other uh, pastors in our, in our community and to our Lutheran, uh, other Lutheran pastors is they constantly have people, Pastor, why don't you preach on this topic? Because too often, including your pastor, there are times that we want to project our own political ideas and prejudices onto the Word of God. We want to act in our own interest. We want to act on our own misconceptions and concerns. And there exist those within churches that do that because they love to stir up rumors. They love to stir up doubt. They, they love to say things to contradict the word that is being preached because it doesn't fit the way they think. And they cause minds to be perplexed. Well, that's not what pastor said. That's not what was said in Bible class. Maybe that's wrong and this is right. And they put questions to those whom they challenge. And they put questions that have some rather heat to them. And by doing so, they discourage the church. By doing so, they degrade the messenger. By doing so, they deter the listener in a very public way. So much so that the speaker wants to pull back. So much so that the listener wants to pull away. So much so they suppress and stifle not only the voice of the messenger, but the voice of the word of God. And that's where Peter found himself in this text. 
That's where sometimes we find ourselves within the midst of our own congregations. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Take a look at your bulletin cover. Luann, this worked out so much better than what, you know, when, when we pick this, I, I, I give Luann an idea and I go, I, I think this will fit. See who's on the cover of the bulletin? Can you, can you guess who that is? Ho hopefully you're guessing that it's Jesus. <laughs> but Jesus is walking away. Jesus walks away from those churches that question, that silence, that suppress. Even though it's uncomfortable words to hear, he walks away. But I want, to hear, I want you to look at Jesus a little bit differently. Because he's not walking away from All Saints Lutheran Church. Sometimes when Jesus is walking in that direction, what is he doing? He's not walking away, he's leading. Notice the text, God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior. He is leading us uh, and he's going ahead of us just like he did to Peter and the apostles. He was doing the same thing that Peter and the apostles are doing in this text. He is doing the, Jesus is doing, was doing the same thing that we are supposed to and called to do in our lives today. And Jesus showed us in the way that he did it by he did not run away from his accusers. He accompanied his accusers without hesitation and without fear. He enabled them to take him hostage to take him prisoner, to bind him, to go to the cross to die for us. And even in that most difficult moment of his life, there he was. He risked the approval of man. And he fully trusted in his father. And not only in his acts of ministry prior to, but even on the cross, he filled Jerusalem with his teaching. Just like the apostles do. And just like we are to do. Although our Jerusalem is called Blairsville, Hiawassee, Hayesville, points all over. But there Jesus was, willing to risk approval by men. Just like Peter said here, we must obey God rather than men. He was willing to risk that approval. So that he could stand before the people. So that he could speak the truth. So that he could preach the gospel. So that he could pro proclaim it boldly. To the point of death, even death on the cross. Because Jesus was not some dying or dead failure. But he made a convincing and convicting appearance. Just as we heard in the gospel reading today to the disciples and to Thomas, Jesus made a convincing, showing his hands, his side, but it was convicting because look at what it did to Thomas where he professed my Lord and my God. Because when Jesus shows up, when Jesus shows up through word and sacrament today, 
it magnifies the power and the presence of God. And it reveals the person and the work of Jesus. And when we gather around word and sacrament, we get to evidence, just like the apostles did, just like the disciples did, we get to evidence the resurrection in new life. And it not only comes in signs and wonders, Jesus walking through a wall, but it comes through preaching and teaching, through the word of God. And so as we evidence this resurrection and new life, it is a call for us to repentance and to be reminded about the promise of forgiveness that you and I have because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And the story of the resurrection didn't end last Sunday. The story of the resurrection continues and now Jesus just like he did with the apostles Jesus calls us to extend its influence let us remain obedient to the testimony of the apostles let us remain obedient to the testimony of Jesus Christ himself let us be ready let us be ready with a word. Let us be ready with an act of mercy in which we can reveal Jesus Christ to others. We might wrestle with the when. We might wrestle with the how. But just remember, as we carry his word, signs and wonders are going to be behind what we say and what we do. So my prayer for you is the last verse of the hymn that you just sang. Church of God, elect and holy, be the people he intends, strong in faith and swift to answer. Each command your master sends. Royal priests, fulfill your calling. Through your sacrifice and prayer, give your lives in joyful service. Sing his praise, his love, declare. Amen. stand as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, you are exalted over all things in heaven and on earth. In your mercy, you shower us with blessings of both body and soul as you care for your creation Enable us to see your hands at work in our midst, that together with all those who share in the power of your son's resurrection, we always say of you, You alone are Lord, Lord and God. God. Giver of life, you renew our souls through the power of your Holy Spirit as we dwell in the shadow of your wings. As we continue to celebrate the joy of our Savior's Easter victory, Grant that your church on earth always speaks your word with boldness and confidence, that like the first eyewitnesses of Christ's resurrection, we share with all people. You alone are Lord and God. You govern all nations with your mighty and merciful hand, O Lord. Show forth your favor to the land in which we live raising up men and women who will serve as godly leaders among us, blessing those who make, administer, and judge our laws, protecting all those who serve in harm's way for the benefit of others, and helping us always to know and believe. You alone are Lord and God. In your son's earthly ministry, people brought to him all those who were sick and suffering, that he might touch and heal them. This ministry of healing continued through his disciples in the earliest church. Even now we know that Jesus heals, renews, and restores through the means of grace he has provided for our benefit. Place your healing hand upon, upon those for in need, especially today we pray for Bob, the family of Tammy King, Ralph, Adam, Ray, and Sally. In the shadow of your healing presence, we boldly confess. You alone are Lord and God. We bring all these prayers before you, gracious Father, in the name of him who is risen from the dead and reigns with you forever as our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The congregation may be seated.
<coughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.